we all seen in the past couple of years, three years ago, Mr. Beastification. I don't know if that, <laughs> that's how you pronounce it, right? So basically, it's like, right, it's copying the Mr. Beast style. A lot of action, everything yeah. has to be like clickbait and so on. I think that now we are finally seeing more and more niche content and seeing more original content again, right? People want to see something new. And that is also important because then in that case, you become quite unique for brands, right? So in this changing, you know, environment of social mm. commerce, how should brands navigate this? Uh, should they work more with macro influencers or nano influencers? Who should be their preferable pool of creators? I would say that it's very important that again, you diversify. And once you understand what works well, better double down with that. Each product is different. Each location is different. Each uh, uh, vertical is different, right? So it's very difficult to give you a final answer for everything. So I would say experiment, do a bit testing, whatever possible. And once you identify the right type of personas in terms of influencers that works well for you. What advice would you give to, let's say, a very young brand manager who's yet to learn how to deal with an agency, how to work with creators, what should be their way to, let's say, approach Alessandro? Yeah, at the beginning, just get your hands dirty in the process. Talk with people, understand the back and forth in communication, how to negotiate the prices. It's going to give you at least an idea. And then the moment that you either do it yourself and you want to scale or you go with an agency, you are prepared, right? Take long hours on social media. You want to understand the social media. Each place is different. You cannot be a brand manager thinking that a Facebook video is going to be the same on TikTok, it's going to be the same on Snapchat. No, no, each place is different. So study each environment, understand what works, understand what influencers are looking for and vice versa as, as a brand and so on. Do a little bit of experiment and once then you're ready, again, either you go by yourself and you can uh, are able to scale or if you don't have capacity in-house, get an agent. One, two, Hello everyone, this is Shubham Tiwari. I'm the head of content marketing and socials at Philo, the universal API for creator data. And I welcome you all to the second season of Impulse, the influencer marketing podcast, which is number one podcast on Google on influencer marketing. Our guest today is Alessandro Boglieri. He's the founder of the Influencer Marketing Factory, TIMF, as the acronym stands for, deals with influencer marketing strategies for the brands. They help build strategies around the messaging, finding right fit for influencers and campaign management. Alessandro also hosts a podcast on YouTube called The Influence Factor, where he connects with influencers as well as professionals to discuss the trends around influencer marketing and their own content. We are really glad to have you, Alessandro. Welcome to Impulse. Thank you so much for having me. Let's open on a fun note. Give me your most controversial hot take on influencer marketing right now. Yeah. So, you know, I'd say that many people are saying that everyone already cracked the code about influencer marketing. I actually feel that we're still at the beginning on many things. There is still uh, confusion sometimes. There is, you know, a bit of loss in translation between brands, content creators, marketers, agencies, and so on. So, you know, many people might be saying like, oh, influencer marketing is dead or, you know, it's changing. Yeah, of course it's changing, but at the same time, it's still at the beginning for many things. So my you know, take is uh, you're still ready and still on time, like, you know, in time to get started but do it in the right way, right? It's, it's easy to get lost in the influencer marketing in the creator economy, but absolutely it's not that, it's just getting started in my opinion. Great, so whoever is listening to this, you're not late. It's not late to get into creator economy, influencer marketing. Speaking about the beginnings, uh, yeah. your foray into, you know, uh, your career started with your website, Milan Noise. Is that the right Correct, pronunciation? Yes. About your life in Milan, aimed at young people. Tell us about your beginnings and uh, your how did you you know create your brand online? What did you learn from it? Absolutely, I will try to make a long story short. You know, we Italian, we we speak a lot, right? And we talk <laughs> a lot. So I'll try to make uh, my past twenty years of uh, you know career and life uh, in a short way. But yeah, since I was like uh, actually a kid and then a teenager, I was always uh, fascinated by the internet, by computers, by technology. And so while work, sorry, like while studying, always been working either as a freelancer or my own, you know, projects. Uh, as you correctly said, Milanois was my first startup. I was around 19 years old or so. And it was a website on uh, Milano. So basically my city in Italy, what to do for, you know, young people between 18 to 25. And that was like, you know, a simple WordPress website. Uh, Facebook was uh, basically the only social media at the time, uh, you know, Instagram was getting started, but that was it, you know? And so it was quite fascinating for us to see how do you basically go live there with like, you know, no budgets, but with, you know, passion when it comes to content, to giving information out there. And I learned a lot, right, during those years. I didn't really make money because I was very young and still trying to understand, right, the business models. But it was amazing to understand about leadership, 
how to create content gone viral, how to uh, manage a team of people, uh, how to schedule uh, an agenda uh, you know, of content uh, across different departments. Uh, so you learn a lot, right? Like so what I say all the time to people that are still young, right? In their 20s, uh, you know, just do it, right? Uh, you are in an age where you can experiment, uh, you can fail without repercussion or any other issues. Uh, and so that's what I did. And so long story short from that experience, uh, I continue working uh, primarily as a growth uh, hacker or a growth marketer. You know, that is the, the way how to define it is basically someone that helps uh, companies with out of the box ideas uh, to acquire new customers. So I did that in the, primarily in the B2B to be SaaS space when I was living in Copenhagen. After Copenhagen, then I moved to Miami, Florida, where I basically, you know, uh, I was like, influencer marketing is something that already fascinated me. I started working on it. Uh, actually, I wrote my master thesis now almost eight, nine years wow. ago about the topic, okay. right? In the academy, there was nothing about it. So I was like one of the first people saying, let's treat influencer marketing as a serious business. And so I created the, all these theses. I wrote these theses and created also a tool to calculate how much to pay influencers on Instagram based on certain data. So you were able to put wow. a, a username and getting an output. These days, uh, there are so many websites that gives you that. But again, nine years ago, eight years ago, there was really nothing out there. And so I was like, let's show brands and people in the academia world that influencer marketing is a serious business. And so after that, again, I was still in Copenhagen, then I moved to Miami and I was like, influencer marketing is growing, there is interest. And so, you know, I decided to co-create this agency. The idea was just to get a you know, a boutique agency with a few clients. And then uh, we were one of the first uh, offering TikTok to clients such as like, you know, uh, you know, Universal Music, Sony Music, many others, wow. and then many other great, uh, you know, like amazing clients, uh, you know, knocked at our door because we were one of the few offering TikTok. And, uh, and from there, then we like, you know, we can explode it. But all in all, that's it. Like I started when I was very young, I made a lot of mistakes. I, I learned a lot of things. And that's why I think now I was able to understand a bit more. I'm still learning, right? But Imagine yeah. if you have like 10 years, right, before to experiment with things, so you're going to get a better position if we just start today, right? So yeah. if you have the time, if you have the experience, like the, 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 if you want to get experience, if you're still young, just do it. That's what I say all the time. Wonderful. Since you have so much experience and you work on, you know, marketing strategies for brands, tell me top three mistakes that brands do when it comes to influencer marketing, they're, which they're still doing. Yeah. Okay. Let's say, you know, typical things. So a brand that is not using an agency, right? So the brand is like, I want to do it myself. They don't do enough homework in terms of identify the right influencers. So maybe they just blast an email or a DM to a bunch of people without looking at uh, important information such as audience, uh, demographics, uh, historical data, and so on. What happened is that, you, yeah, you might receive, uh, you know, uh, interest from certain influencers, uh, but they might not be the right fit. You're going to pay them. They're not going to perform. Then you're going to start thinking like, ah, influencer marketing, you know, is not the right thing. Uh, that's not true. It's just that to identify the right influencers. So that is uh, step zero, but one of the most important ones, in my opinion. Number two mistake, it is to consider influencer marketing as a direct sort of uh, ROI machine similar to paid media, right? I would say yes and no to that. Of course, these days, uh, brands, uh, fairly, they want to get an ROI from campaigns. That's also what we do, right? As, a, as an agency, we tell you brand awareness plus also conversions. Of course, the, the, it's quite crucial these days. But you cannot think about influencer marketing as uh, I put $1 in and the same day I get this amount of dollars out, right? It's all about the behaviors of users. If you go on Google Ads, most probably you're looking for something specific, right? It's pool, right? You're pulling to your self-information I need this pair of shoes. You go on the e-commerce, you buy it. It's even easier, right, to, to track, especially on Google Ads, LinkedIn Ads, Facebook Ads, whatever. With tracking pixels, it's, it's that easy, right? And usually the behavior and the purchase, uh, you know, life cycle is that linear usually. When it comes to influencer marketing, you're primarily pushing the message to someone, right? You might not even know about this product, but I see it on my For You page on TikTok. I see it on a YouTube video. I might be then interested and I might click on the link it doesn't mean that I'm going to acquire, purchase, or sign up for the service the same day, right? It might yeah. happen after one week. Or maybe I'm going to see another influencer pushing the same product one week after and might, you know, buy from that person instead of from the first one. So don't think about, like, I'm going to put $1 in, how much I'm going to get the same day. The life cycle, like, you know, and the sales cycle or something on the influencer, might be a bit more longer. So just know that it, it works. Huh? You just have to have... First of all, patience and look at it as, again, a different way to do marketing compared to, you know, Google Ads. So these are two. Oh, the other one is uh, not enough uh, clear scope of work 
to influencers. So another okay. big mistake is that, you know, uh, many brands, uh, they are not very clear when it comes to guidelines, uh, number of deliverables, type of deliverables, uh, payment structure, and so on. And that can cause a lot of uh, frustration and miscommunication and loss in translation between the brand and influencers. So once you identify the right one, so as we said, step one, you have to identify right, the right influencers, actually step zero. And after that, you want to be sure that each of them is going to sign an agreement and the agreement is going to have a specific scope of work for that specific campaign with all the most important information in like it's better to give a bit, a bit more information than you know like just just thinking that everything is clear from day one and right. uh, you, you want it there one legally speaking right and two just to coordinate the work in the best way possible so there are again uh, different other potential mistakes and and you know the by from brands but these are the ones that i, I see uh, most common ones yeah, to summarize, like working with the right uh, creators as well as understanding the life cycle of influencer marketing yeah. and being patient with it, as well as being thorough in your research and your, you know, conditions that you're setting you for your campaign and for the creators as well. So that's a very exactly. loud and yes. clear message for all the brand managers who are listening to this. Alessandro, now moving to social commerce, we are seeing, you know, the impacts or the practices that are being played in Southeast Asia or China, like, you know, live selling, live, you know, uh, commerce where billion dollars of business is happening in one live session it's coming you know to west uh, like tiktok is pushing its you know marketplace uh, shop so how do you see the role of influencer marketing you know in social commerce in the west particularly has it changed over the period of time of course it is it has but what do you think so yeah, as you, you know, as you said, in the you know in in China and other countries like you know Indonesia. I mean, Indonesia had some troubles with TikTok right in the past months, but uh, uh, they have been looking at you know live streaming, social commerce uh, in a different way compared to Western countries, right? Uh, I could talk about like one hour of you know like all the all the factors, all the you know the history of different countries on, on and the whys. But uh, what I can see it is that it's finally coming, you know, especially with the TikTok shop push. Um, and this is what I say all the time. This is why I say that, uh, you know, uh, live commerce, social commerce, that are like, you know, a fantastic way to sell products. If you think about it, uh, the oldest things in nature, in any society, they have been influence, right? So from the beginning of time, there have always been someone with influence. So a person that yep. was able to influence the others and commerce from the beginning of time, even before coins, there were like, you know, shells, right. To exchange in terms of like, you know, things or like they were just like exchange. I'm going to give you one item. You're going to give me something else in exchange for that. So the idea of commerce has been there from, from for, forever. If you combine them together, that's quite a powerful tool, right? Because you are having yeah. influence with something that is buying and selling, right? That is uh, commerce. And so if you combine them together, you have this powerful tool where you're going to buy something because you trust the person or because uh, even if you don't know this person, especially on TikTok shop, right? These days, uh, TikTok, you don't know necessarily the person, but you get influenced by uh, a video, right? I would say that the big thing about social commerce, uh, it is that, um, first of all, you can see the item in use. Let's talk about, you know, something very popular that has been uh, the, uh, you know, the little machine for your uh, massage machine, right? That you can put on your neck. I've seen so many videos on, on TikTok. Why is that powerful? Because first of all, I see the everyone, like the everyday person, right? Uh, um, using that machine. So it's not like, you know, a VIP telling me to buy that. It's like another person like me in their room that they have a lot of stress on their neck, and they're telling me like, you know what, this is a game changer. It costs only 40 bucks, 30 bucks. You can buy it here, right? So first of all, yeah. I have this uh, relatable type of content. Number two, it's um, authentic, right? Uh, it's, it's, uh, I know that this has been a buzzword for a long time, but I would say that once you see someone using it, actually using the product, uh, it's like, okay, this person is using it. It's telling me about the benefits, right? Uh, number three, you can see social proof. It's very important. You can go... And either you can read the comments of that video or you can go, especially on TikTok shop, you can click on the product and go and read about the reviews. And so imagine now you have the, the showcase of the product in a video, right? Number two, you have a person that you relate to somehow that is telling you like, hey, this changed my life. Number three, I'm gonna, even if I don't trust this person, like, mm, is it like actually like an authentic messages? Uh, does this product really works, you can go and check the comments and people are going to say like, either I love it, I order it, I can wait, or like I order it, it actually didn't like works like this. And so imagine like, again, the power of these, and that's why the people are making 
five to six digits in, in fee because you can get in front of millions of people with no budget. You just do a video, you post it out there. And then anytime that someone buys something, thanks to the affiliate fees, you make it. So it's a win-win-win, right? Uh, um, usually the final customer, it's a win because uh, it might get a discount, you know, especially with talk shop these days. It's a win for the brand because they're selling more. And it's a yep. win for the influencer because they are taking an affiliation fee, right? And making money just to promote something online. So again, it's, right. it's quite powerful. It, we're still quite far behind compared to other countries, but uh, yep. uh, compared to just like one year ago, we're doing like a, a definitely a faster journey. Yeah, when it comes yeah, to yeah definitely. So in this changing, you know, environment of social commerce, how do, you know, how should brands navigate this? Uh, should they work more with macro influencers or nano influencers, as you mentioned, who are creating relatable content? Who should be their, you know, preferable pool of creators? So what do we say all the time, no matter the type of campaign, we always advise to do a mix of uh, different influencers uh, and content creators because uh, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, right? You don't want to go right. only two big people thinking they're going to kill it and then maybe you spend a lot of money, right? And then for some reason, the video flops or it gets shadow banned because, you know, we all know that when you use, use certain keywords, every social media try to shadow ban the content, uh, or whatever, right? So yeah. what we say all the time is that do a bit of a mix, you know, some micro, some medium, some macro. Uh, first of all, that will tell you, data will tell you what to do next, right? Um, instead of just going by what you think that is going to perform, right? And how, just use the data to talk for themselves, right? So basically, you want to go out, let's say, take 10 influencers, do maybe, you know, uh, 30, 35 or 40 percent, right? Uh, micro, and then you know, 20 percent or 30 percent medium, and the remaining is going to be you know, macro. Only once you do that, you're going to be able to track everything, right? Thanks to UTM yeah. parameters or like thanks to TikTok shop and so on. You're able to see exactly who sold what. And once you have that data, you're going to start seeing, like, okay, I noticed that usually for these type of products, uh, micro influencers are better because of this reason. Or actually right. notice that these other products, macro, are better. So first of all, use the data, right? Instead of just having your guts, because guts are, are fine sometimes, but when it comes to selling things online, you also need data, right? To back up your analysis and everything. Um, and so I would say that it's very important that, again, you diversify. And once you yep. understand what works well, better, double down with that. Each product is different, each, each, each location is different, each, each uh, uh, vertical is different, right? So it's very yeah. difficult to give you a, a, a final answer for everything. So I would say experiment, do A-B testing, whatever possible. And once you identify the right type of personas in terms of influencer that works well for you, then you should check for maybe other 10, all of that type of target, right? And then you repeat and, and so on. So it's sort of like, you know, optimization loop where you, you, you do things, you study the data, you double down on what works, you remove what doesn't work. Similar as you would do with Google Ads with A-B testing. It's the same concept, but now instead yeah. of having assets, you have influencers. Yeah, I mean, I can think of Stanley Mugs, right? They yes. went live on, you know, TikTok because of UGC creators and normal people. It's, it's mm -hmm. like word of mouth. So yeah. whatever works for you, you should double down on. There is no single playbook. That's the message here. Um, exactly. You know, by 2027, uh, creator economy is projected to go beyond $480 billion, right? Yeah. So, and we are seeing this trend uh, starting with Mr. Beast that, you know, no brand can, you know, actually sponsor his videos because his videos are so expensive now. So they have their own products like Feastables or Prime by KSI or everyone. Mm -hmm. So how important it is to work with brands in this, you know, growing scenario for individual creators? Should they look to replicate what Mr. Beast is doing, create their own things or work, continue to work with brands? Depending on the platform, so, of course. Yeah, no, of course, you know. So first of all, you know, little note about Mr. Beast. Uh, you know, uh, we, all, we all seen in the past, couple of years, three years ago, what is called the Mr. Beast, Mr. Beastification. I don't know if that, yeah. that's how you pronounce it, right? So basically it's like, right, it's copying the Mr. Beast style. So very, you know, like a lot of cuts in the video, a lot of action, everything yeah. has to be like clickbait and so on. I think that 
now we are finally seeing a bit of uh, like you know diversion from that so i think that people are starting to make their own content i feel that people don't want to see anymore just a copy paste type of content uh, so I, i'm seeing more and more niche content and seeing more original content again right people want to see something new and that is also important because then in that case you become quite unique for brands right uh, if you just do yet the same uh, content as many others uh, of course it could help in terms of uh, volume right you're doing what others are doing therefore you might receive more like you know uh, requests from brands but at the same time anytime that we as an agency we look for certain influencers uh, there might be a specific requirement right by the brands and if you're like one of the 1000 youtube channels out there that is doing the same thing it might be a bit difficult right to sell you in a way but if you have something unique uh, could be your style how you make the video could be that maybe you add something that is going to be engaging uh, uh, with your with your with your audience, right? Something a bit different from the others. It could be a format of video that no one else has created yet. Well, now you position yourself in a unique way, and even when you just go out there to the brand and why you should pick me, you can tell the brand like, by the way, this is also something that no one else is doing it. I'm getting so much like engagement and. Uh, amazing reactions from my audience because of this reason and so on. This is also something I would advise to, you know, as a piece of advice for every creator and influencer out there whenever you do outreach to brands. In addition to metrics, tell us also like why you are unique, why we should pick you, right? And so again, I think that we're going away slowly from the copy and paste to getting back to the original content because I also feel that people get kind of bored right and used by seeing the same things over and over they want to see something new and uh, and if you're able to give them to people people are gonna continue watching yeah i mean speaking of getting bored of the same type of content i'm not sure about you know the kind of content mr beast is creating nowadays i mean all the more power to him but i'm you know seeing some repetition there so i mean there mm -hmm. is a you know movement away from the mr beastification as well because people are calling out calling it out right like Colin yeah. and Samir uh, made a video yeah so that's also really important uh speaking about you know brands working with influencers and building trust in their brand right that's mm -hmm. one of the major pieces of puzzle of a collaboration first of all do you agree to that I mean what should be the ideal result of a collaboration instead uh, apart from the numbers of course yeah, so first of all on that, you know, like you want just to be on the same page from day one, right? So uh, at the beginning, right, when I said about the scope of work, uh, there is also something important because you want just to be sure that you're working. So both both parties, right, so the brand and the influencer, you want to be sure that both parties are professionals, right? Uh, that you understand That's each other's, uh, the communication is there, there is transparency in terms of, uh, of everything, uh, there is a good back and forth, uh, both parties shouldn't like ghost the others because again, both people are working, right? The, the brand is working, the influencer is working, right? So you want to be sure that the communication is there. So yeah, in addition to metrics, you want to be sure that also um, all the questions are answered, right? From the brand to the influencer because they want maybe sometimes there are guidelines, sometimes there are different rules, sometimes there are things that they should say, they should not say and so on. So I think that being on the same page apart from metrics, but also understanding the DNA of the brand, understanding the style of the influencer is, is important. So, so the influencer should understand the brand values and the brand should understand that you don't want to dictate uh, right, what to say for the influencer because then right. their style, their tone of voice is going to be non-authentic anymore. People are going to easily see these days. Yep. Customers, users are not dumb. But they can easily see if there is an authentic message and is in the style of the other videos or if it's something dedicated just for that. And at the end of the day, you see it in terms of engagement and you see it in terms of uh, conversions. You can easily see when the video was uh, scripted and one instead was like uh, natural. It's a big difference uh, at the end of the funnel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, speaking more about the influencer marketing factory, can you tell us what how many you know brands do you work with what kind of brands they are in terms of size mm -hmm. any any insight that you want to give yeah so we work with you know more than hundreds brands at any given moment uh, uh, we have uh, from fortune 100 clients uh, passing by mid enterprise uh, and finishing yeah. with uh, direct to consumers so you know from the big dogs that everyone knows right uh, to maybe new brands that got funding and they want to grow faster they want to show traction and they want to do it thanks to influencer marketing in terms of verticals we cover a lot of verticals um, and you know from beauty and makeup to uh, automotive passive by you know apps uh, um, 
fitness and you know uh, household products like you know you 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 name it uh, it's easier for me to tell you like one all we cover there are certain things like you know tobacco guns politics that, that we yep. uh, you know casinos so that we we tend to stay away for um, for for a couple of things, one for you know ethical questions, and, and number two also because it's uh, very difficult so to run certain things on social media, right? It's uh, it's more than fair, I would say that it should, right? Uh, difficult to run certain campaigns when you have such young age, like you know people listening and might be easily manipulated to do certain things that they should not do. So we decided to not to do certain verticals, but anything else that is like there, we we cover it. And uh, in terms of like you know again what we do. We do, we, we, the core business is like for us campaign management. So we help brands from going from A to Z when it comes to any campaigns. Again, in the, identify the right influencers, uh, um, agreements with each of them, uh, negotiate the prices, uh, come up also with the concept and the, all the creative concepts. So something that I think is very interesting, more and more brands in the past uh, years, uh, um, you know, b- before six years ago when we created a company, they were coming to us and be like, hey, we need a list of influencers. Uh, can you help us just activate the campaign? That was it. These days they're coming to us um, and they're like, we would like to have a 360 approach here. We would like to have creative concepts. We would like to have ideas for the videos. We would like to understand how this campaign with the influencers is going to work together with our outdoor, uh, you know, activities with our TV commercials and so on, right? So there is more right. of this back and forth and that's what is happening. So that's what we offer. And then, you know, to- on top of it, of course, we started offering more things like pay media amplification, UGC, so user-generated content uh, creation for brands, uh, creator programs, uh, um, research uh, in the creator economy. So there are some brands that come to us and be like, we want to do a focus group with people. We want to do a survey uh, to understand how creators think about our product or our feature, if it is an app or social media. And so everything that is like influencer marketing plus creator economy, it's something that we offer these days. Uh, because again, there is a lot of more demand from brands to have uh, this, again, cohesive uh, approach instead of just getting a list of influencers and that's about it you know right clearly you are open to exploring newer and newer you know product uh, features and services extending you know to yeah, your all the time yeah. yeah so what's something new that you're developing any feature or service that is immediately you know let's say the quarterly focus for the agency yeah so for sure we started doing of course more social commerce we talked about the social commerce in our agency more than three years ago when uh, just a few players were looking into that. Uh, we wanted to do uh, a lot of cool things before uh, actually ahead of time, but we noticed that both social media and brands were not ready yet, but finally they are. So we're definitely doubling down on uh, social commerce, uh, specifically like you know TikTok shops, so helping brands to set up everything or sending the people to their Shopify, track everything. So absolutely social commerce is something that we're doubling down because there is more interest, there is a lot of money that, you know, the, the good thing of social commerce is that sky's the limit, right? Once you pay the, the, the influencer for a fixed amount, everything that is on top, it's, it's, you know, it's yours, basically. Or you can also do, like, you know, affiliate, or you can do, um, you know, fixed plus, uh, uh, you know, uh, depending on fees, so not as affiliate, but you can just go directly with the influencer, do a, a specific agreement and so on. So that is something that we're doing. And then, uh, yeah, the other one that I was mentioning, the... Uh, research right so more and more brands come to us and be like i would like to do a focus group with x amount of people or like i would like to do a survey only to creators in the u.s with this age in this category and so what we do it is that we have uh, our uh, own databases already of people that we know that might be uh you know eager to uh you know uh, earn some money to answer questions and once we have all that information that we clean up the data we do a nice report for the brand or also for apps right many many times maybe there is a new app or a social media that has a new feature and they want to see people do do actually creators like this where should we go right at the end of the day creators are the one that are the users, right, of uh, on a day-to-day yep. operation. And you want to know from them how they think about something. So, again, in addition to the traditional campaign management, uh, these are a couple of uh, uh, things that we offer, and then also the creator programs. Uh, you know, it's something quite unique. It's not for every brand out there. It's not for every, you know, company out there. But imagine you are like a social media, you are a new app that want to become the next big social media, and you, yep. uh, and you might need a lot of people posting content uh, on your app every single day for X amount of months, we also help with that, right? Because at wow. the end of the day, you need traction. If you go on a new app and there is no content, what do you do? 
you exit, you uninstall it, you forget about it forever. But if you get into an app with a lot of profiles, a lot of content, then you have social proof, right? And to be honest, unless you are very good at doing that organically, you're going to need someone helping you out. And that's also something that we do. So we help you, like, you know, get into the next level mm-hmm. with your app or social media yeah. feature, just getting people with consistency every single day posting. And once you finish that phase, then you can go organically. But it, to be honest, like every social media out there started somehow with some, uh, you know, paid help because no yes, one is going to be the first one, right? Posting. You need others yeah. to post before you, right? You, you, you need to cross the chasm as the, you know, exactly. that famous book suggests. And <clears throat> so in a way you're providing um, val- product validation as well as social proofing for brands exactly. now. So clearly the agency landscape is really getting interesting, right? It's spreading mm-hmm. uh, its uh, tentacles to newer and newer exciting things so my natural question at this point is where do you see uh you know yourself and the agency in the next two years or five years if that is uh you know because we are in the middle of AI revolution AI is going on affiliate marketing is you know like uh, going on fire so where do you see yourself yeah absolutely so um we can see that ourselves we're going from the you know influencer marketing arena to the bigger creator economy right so if you look at as it was a bubble right it would have um you know the inf- influencer marketing there is a bubble inside a bigger bubble there is the creator economy right yeah and so when we started the company it was uh the creator economy was not a thing yet it was uh, you know all influencer marketing was a thing but now we have uh, the creator economy that is getting bigger and bigger. And we start noticing, again, that more brands were coming to us, not only for influencer marketing campaigns, but for all the other services around it. And so we were like, instead of telling them, like, you know what, uh, you should look for other agencies or so on, we start, like, you know, amplifying the services. And also the brand actually love it because uh, they don't have to go and have in five different agencies, right, when it comes to the creator economy. I still yeah. believe that if you want to do SEO, email marketing, influencer marketing, and so on. It should have maybe different agencies, but that's why we don't offer, we do not offer SEO. We do not offer, you know, email marketing. We do not offer landing page creations, right? But everything that is the creator economy, we do. So in two, two, three years, we can see ourselves as the creator economy agency, even more than just the influencer marketing agencies out there. Um, and we are continuing like looking at what is next, um, experimenting things, giving to our clients uh, what, what they want in terms of like not only what exists now, but what yeah. could be next. And that's it again. We're, we're moving uh, and shifting from the just the, again the influencer marketing arena to the creative economy because uh, not only is bigger, but brands want to have again this uh, 360 type of approach and we want to be the agency out there to help them. Right. So going beyond influencer marketing is the plan and to cater to wider needs of wider audience. Uh, that is the next two years or five years plan for uh, for you. So that's Correct, great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's take some fun questions uh, because we are thinking of the future and future belongs to creators. So, which influencer would you most like to you know take to lunch? Okay, actually, it's someone that I'm trying to also have on our own podcast. Uh, uh, I like him yeah. a lot. Uh, he just did a collaboration with Duncan. He's uh, Nick Di Giovanni. Uh, okay. You might, uh, you know, most probably saw him. Is 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 one that I like because I mean I love cooking. Okay, I love cooking. I love everything that is food. Uh, being Italian, of course, you know it, ma- it makes sense, <laughs> right? That I'm into food and cooking. Um, it would be great for me to bring someone. It could be him or it could be many others. But when it comes to the food scene, I'm quite fascinated because you know. Uh, it's easy, right, just to think about, yeah, let's do just some cooking videos, but there, are, there is so much competition. So for me, it's fascinating how how do you get outside the, you know, the, the bubble, right? Uh, and, and actually you get identified as the person there. And also, <clears throat> we'd like to talk about, um, you know, how do you actually get from just a few people watching to millions of people and then start doing like a you know, collaboration with like this one with Duncan, for instance. How do you also collaborate with other influencers, right? Especially in the food, um, most probably you saw it, right? More and more influencers are meeting in each other's apartments uh, to cook together. That is a great way because you can just get your audience, their audience, you combine them together. And now who is following, you know, you is following me and vice versa. So yeah, Nick is one that I follow. 
uh, quite often. Uh, there are a few others. Uh, uh, Sam's Eats, uh, I like it also a lot. Uh, uh, there is also Notorious uh, Foodie, I think uh, is based out of the UK. And if there is food related with people that are very good at cooking, <laughs> uh, I would love to go to dinner with them. But more than dinner, I would love to cook with them. Like doing a okay. one session together, cooking something, that would be uh, fantastic. Okay. New York style pizza or Neapolitan pizza? Oh, Napolitan pizza, even though, <laughs> even though, because I'm Italian, even though I also love New York pizza, so I'm not like one of those Italians like, oh, that's, you know, uh, you shouldn't eat it. Like, Napolitan number one, absolutely, and number two is going to be New York pizza. I ask this question because you, since you love, you know, these kind of creators who are also good at eating, like, you know, Dave Portnoy. I'll yeah, of course, yeah, he does all the <laughs> reviews. In, yeah, yeah. I love watching his reviews. So, I mean, I would love to do that as a job, to be honest. I'm just going around pizza places um, and try. <laughs> Can't mean. Where do I sign, you know? <laughs> yeah, and he's a, he's a very, uh, like, I would say, force of nature. I mean, some mm-hmm. people are that way. They can channelize yeah. their energy into, you know, become a creator of a particular category. Yeah. Wonderful. So if Alessandro were to become, a let's say, a creator other than a podcaster, of course, you're also a creator. Yeah. Yeah. Other than podcasters, what would you have become as a creator? Uh, so still absolutely in the food. I already have like, I have an <laughs> idea uh, already. Like, so in Italy, we have these, uh, these little, uh, like this, it's, it's a famous show where basically um, there is someone that goes in little towns around Italy and then he meets the people there. He buy local, uh, you know, fresh ingredients okay. uh, could be, you know, for vegetables, whatever, whatever. And then they, so half of the show is about, Getting like it's a nice way to see the city or the town through the food, right? The scene, nice. and then at the end of it, they spend the lot, lot, like half remaining part actually cooking, yeah. and then they give the food to the people of the town. Oh, nice. And, what's you know, the show I sound, called? Huh? What, what's the show called? I missed out on the name. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't recall exactly the name uh, of okay. this show. Um, it's something that usually is for like older generations, so it's like the typical thing that my grandma maybe used to watch in, in TV back in the day. But I would like to take that concept and make it a bit more social, right? For social media. I know that they already can exist, but that would combine the things that I love the most, so it's traveling the world and cooking. Um, if that could be my job, like as a content creator, oh my God, like I, every day would be joyful, you know? So, uh, so it's on the cards? That, that's it. Sorry? It's, it's on the cards? You're going to start creating content like that? I haven't, I haven't because I'm very busy running the company. <laughs> But if tomorrow going to be a bit more free, uh, absolutely. Because again, I, I love creating content. I love cooking. I love exploring the world. I think that uh, the, every time that you travel, every time that you try a new food uh, and you talk with people from each place, uh, you learn so much about everything. You learn so much about yourself, about the others, about the world, especially these days, right? With everything that is going on, I think that it's quite important to understand there are other point of views, there are other cultures happening together with yours. And the more you learn about others, the more you can uh, accept and uh, the more you can uh, co-create instead of uh, destroying, you know, so. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Alessandro Boliari, for your talk today. Uh, so much, so many insights uh, came out of it. Uh, I hope for everyone. Uh, just one last thing. Uh, what advice would you give to, uh, let's say, a very young brand manager who's yet mm-hmm. to learn how to deal with an agency, how to work with creators? What should be their way to, let's say, approach Alessandro? I'd say at the beginning, uh, try to do it yourself without spending too much money just for you to understand how things work, right? So talk with a few influencers, understand uh, usually what are the requirements and so on. So the first, if you, especially if you don't have like enough budget right at the beginning, I would say... Don't go with an agency necessarily because the agency is going to do all the work for you, right? But it's going to be a bit more expensive. Uh, I would say do it yourself and then only once you're ready to scale, right? So you don't have enough people in the company to manage it. Or another example could be you have a hundred people that you have to pay and you just don't want to take care of all that time consuming aspects, right? right? And you want an agency that do it. But I think that at the beginning, just like get your hands dirty in the process, talk with people, understand that. The, the, the back and forth in communication, how to negotiate the prices. It's going to give you at least an idea. And then the moment that you either do it yourself and you want to scale or you go with an agency, you are prepared, right? Instead of right. trying to go from one, from one to 100, the, the same week, uh, spending a lot of money, that w- what I said before, right? You're going to spend a lot of money, you're going to waste money, and then you're going to start saying, influencer marketing doesn't work. No, 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 it works. There's a bit of science behind that. Do it smaller, understand everything, 
stay along a, 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 a long hours on social media. You want to understand that social media. Each place is different. You cannot be a, 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 a you know a brand manager thinking that a Facebook video is going to be the same on TikTok. It's going to be the same on Snapchat. No, no, no. Each place is different. So study each environment. Understand what works. Understand what influencers are looking for and vice versa as, as a brand and so on. Do a little bit of experiment and once then you're ready, again, either you go by yourself and you can are able to scale or if you don't have capacity in-house, get an agency. But yeah. only once you're ready to go, if not, there's going to be a lot of miscommunication, lots of translation, a lot of frustration. Right. No one wants that. Yeah, basically get, get your hands dirty, uh, learn the ropes of the job. And yeah, there are people like exactly. Alessandra who can help you take your game to the next level. Last couple of questions, basically yes. rituals that we make our guests go through. You have to give us either a book recommendation or a movie recommendation. Okay, yeah, I like this book. Uh, it's quite old. It's called The Tipping Point. Oh, and okay. The Tipping yeah, Point, I don't know if you, you, maybe you know it, it's quite quite yeah. famous uh? uh but you know just just for people that don't know it uh, I, I would recommend them to read them it's basically how certain things uh, became either viral or there was again this this tipping point right that changed things for an industry for a brand for a person and many times it's something that you didn't plan you didn't expect but it's quite interesting to start it you know in terms of uh, from an anthropological point of view from a societal point of view uh, and it's something that uh, I read many many years ago uh, while I was working as a growth hacker and I think that gives you a lot of input on how to think how 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 people in society works and that sometimes even if you do everything in a certain way it might not go as planned and many times when you don't plan something it's going to go even better and more viral than when you plan for months if not years so sometimes you just have to do things, see how it works. But again, the, I don't know, it, it kind of changed how I see the world on many aspects. So that is definitely one that I would recommend to read. Nice. Do you like The Bear on Hulu? Yes, I watched the, the first couple of uh, um, seasons. I still have to watch the last one. And by the way, I also went uh, to the, uh, I just passed by, didn't go in to the place where oh, the Italian okay. beef place in Chicago. I, I saw, I was oh. past. Passing there randomly, I saw the sign. I was like, wait a minute, I saw this uh, somewhere and it was the bare place. So, uh, nice. yes, it's, uh, cool. it's something that I, I don't watch it usually like uh, to relax because it's the most stressful yeah, show. Induces anxiety, <laughs> correct. <laughs> so I, I try sometimes like, you know, maybe do a little, uh, you know, lunch break, right? 10 minutes, whatever, 20 minutes in front of a computer while eating. It will let me watch something and I try to watch the bear and I was like, this is not helping to relax. So... <laughs> <laughs> I had to find some other, maybe during the evening or something. But to be honest, I loved it. But it was very difficult when you are very stressed, already running yeah, an agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a lot of anxiety. And then you watch something that gives you more anxiety. I was like, I, I had to find maybe another show to relax. So, but, but I love did it, you, yes. Did you click a picture and post on Instagram of the, the place? Uh, I, I just I just put it uh, maybe in the stories uh, back in money, many months ago when I went there. Oh, okay, uh, okay. I, mean, I didn't I, I, never post about the one. I'll follow you on Instagram in that case because you're going to interesting places. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Well, when it comes to re re restaurant recommendations, uh, I'm, I'm the right person. Yes. Uh, so you heard it. Uh, please follow Alessandro uh, on the platforms that you are. Uh, last thing, uh, would you like to nominate anyone for our show? Oh, I have a f uh, several people on our own podcast uh, that, uh, that were great. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, like, oh, there are so many, um, one that I had the honor to have on lately, uh, and we had a very interesting conversation. It was the CMO of MasterCard, Raja. Uh, I interviewed him uh, a few weeks ago. The episode still have to go uh, live soon. And we talk about, uh, quantum marketing and it was quite fascinating. Like, uh, it was, uh, how do we see marketing in the next uh, 20 years uh, to come? Uh, he is very knowledgeable, of course. You know, he's the CMO of MasterCard, right? So not just yeah, a random yeah. person. So if yeah. you had the chance to have a chat with him, 20, 30 minutes, a uh, uh, great person, a great professional. So yes, it's, that would be a great name to have on. Thank you so much, Alessandro Boliari, for coming to the show and sharing the wisdom nuggets with us all. With us all. Uh, we wish you 
take your game to the next level and ultimately contribute to the you know expansion of creator economy uh thank you so much for whatever you're doing and thanks for watching this show if you felt it was helpful please uh subscribe and like uh, this episode and uh, yeah please follow alessandro wherever you want to gain more knowledge about influencer marketing thank you so much impulse the influencer marketing podcast is brought to you by philo philo is the easiest way to get access to authenticated creator data from hundreds of different platforms to know more about philo visit getphilo.com that's get p h y l l o .com also make sure to search for influencer marketing podcast in apple podcast spotify google podcast or any of your favorite podcast listening platforms and don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes on behalf of the team here at philo thank you so much for listening